we reach a point where we have to do two things at the same time. We want the player to move on the grid and we need some functions for him to do that. We don't want the player to be really aware of the grid. He will just ask, can I move there? When I press the right, left, top or down a row and the grid will give the answer. To do that, we need a function to check if a grid cell is empty, if the player or anything else can move on it. The player doesn't have to know about the grid. It doesn't know its coordinates on the grid. That's why we will use the position of the player in pixels and inside of the function, we'll convert it to a position on the board. So we need a position and then we will also need to know where the character wants to move. If he wants to move to the cell that's to the right, to the top, down or left. We know that the direction on the player script is a vector 2 and that's just a unit vector. So we can add that direction to the player's position on the grid to get the cell that is next to him. Let's convert the player position to a grid position and we'll use the opposite of the map to world method. It's called world to map. That converts a world position in pixels to a grid position. World to map pose returns the position of the player on the grid. If we add the direction, we get the coordinates that we want to check for. Now, here's the trick. We want to check for several things if we want the game to work. First of all, we have to check if the player doesn't want to move outside of the grid because the grid is only 16 by 16 in our case. The player will collide with the edges of the map. And next, we want to check if the cell he wants to move on is empty or not. So let's start with the world boundaries. We have to check if the grid position is lower than the maximum grid size and if it's greater or equal to zero. That allows us to check if on the x-axis at least, the character is trying to move to a cell that exists on the grid. Then copy and paste this line, we'll nest it inside of it because we have to check also if that's the case for the y position. Just replace the x with the y, it's the same thing but on the second axis. And now we can check if the new position exists in the grid. It's a simple condition, we'll go inside of the grid array. So we'll use the coordinates that we just calculated at the top of the function and check if there's something inside of that cell or not. So if there's nothing, we can return true. The cell is vacant. Otherwise, we return false. Note that there's a shorthand to write that. We can return true if that condition is fulfilled, else we return false. This is your ternary operator. Now let's say the code, now let's say we call the function and this is false. The function doesn't return anything, so that's not good for us. At the end, we want to return false. If any of these two conditions fail, the program will continue its execution. It will skip this line and return no. The cell is not vacant, but you can't move onto it. There's one last method that we need to update the position of anything that moves on the grid. It can be the player, but also the enemies. For that, we'll have the update child position function. It takes the child node, its position and the direction, although we can remove the last two and just get everything from the child node. For example, the player will send itself to the function and the function will get its current position, convert it to the grid position, then move it inside of the grid array we have at the top of the script. Last but not least, we'll want to return the new target world position to the child. The player doesn't know about the grid, so we need to tell him where to move in the game world in pixels next. First of all, let's calculate the grid position of the player. We'll use world to map for that. And we'll pass in the player or child node position. 
Let's add a print statement to just see if we're getting the right grid position every time when we're testing out. And then we will take the current grid position and inside of the grid we'll empty it. So uh, using the grid, we'll access the gridpose.x column inside of the array followed by gridpose.y row and set it to null again. The player is going to move away from this cell so there's nothing inside of it. Next up, we have to calculate the new grid position. So let's call it uh, new grid pose. And this is simply the grid pose that we got plus the character's direction. Just like we set the previous cell to null, we can update the new cell. So instead of grid pose here, we'll use new grid pose to access the new coordinates in the array. And we'll set that to um, one of our enum members. So we had the player, obstacle or collectible, for example. Now you'd want to use something along the lines of child node type, for example. To get the right type, if you start to add different types of entities, enemies, other types of characters and all, and you want to set everything right in the grid, every moving actor will need to have its own type. So for that, you'll need a type variable in the player script. And the thing is, you can only set this type variable from the enum from the grid. In the ready function, you'd have to do something like type is equal to get parent and then you choose, for instance, the player. Bouncing back to the grid update child pose, we can get the child node.type member variable. We're almost done. Now we've updated the array, but we haven't sent back the target position to the player yet. So let's do that. I will create a new target position variable and we'll return it to Let's use map to world for that. We'll return the new grid position converted to the world position. And don't forget to add half tile size. Otherwise, while returning the top left corner of the tile. It'd be nice if we could test the function to see if it works. Let's head to the player script and do that now. We'll comment out the velocity and move part. And all we need to do is based on the direction to update the player's position. For that, we have to get the parent. Maybe we'll set it in the ready function. So let's add a grid variable. And in the ready function, we'll set the grid to the parent node. And then we can change it as well in the type variable. Down the script, we have to call the update child position method from the grid and we'll pass itself to send this current node to send the player to it. We have to store the target position it returns in a variable as well. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything but update the array. And with this target position, we can set the position of the character to its new target. If you try out the game, you will see that the character moves very fast because it's happening every single tick. However, you can see how he always lands on a position on the grid. Alright, so in the next video, we will connect the player script to the grid and add a smooth motion with collisions with the obstacles. See you then.